Welcome back to Get Even. It's the 20th of June 2015, which I think is the same day that the explosion happened with a hostage situation. And apparently there was a drug deal gone wrong, is what was suspected here. But Red suspects something more was happening, something connected with the explosion. Jesus, man. Get your hands off. Money for any of this. Shut up. Move. I was thinking perhaps the man that was killed here was us, but I don't think so. If that's the man that was killed, which seems likely, they didn't sound like us. Little droplets of blood. This looks like the room where the explosion happened, but it's a little bit different. Like this. This is, I think, the doorway that I came in before. Into this room, except it wasn't like this. It was like a, it was a flat level thing, or maybe even a down to up kind of thing. It definitely wasn't upstairs, down to here. But those, that door was the same over there. And the chair. Wait. I know this place. This is where the explosion happened. Ah, yes. Your mind is preoccupied with the explosion, Mr. Black. The Pandora can only process what your brain offers. Concentrate only on the memory at hand. I am trying. And try harder. No worries, Chief. Glad to be aboard. Got a hair on her head. Trust me. You brought me here. Fuck you. Red? Hey, Red! What the hell is this? None of this makes any sense! You are here because you have formed a mental link between this man and the explosion. The Pandora is trying to decode the messages your mind is sending. Focus. That's it. The Pandora unit is offering you a pathway deeper into your memory. Pursue this. Focus and proceed. Human memory is unreliable at the best of times. I need you to work with my technology, not against it. Take in your surroundings and get as much information as you can. I hear sirens. Homicide? Multiple homicide. No IDs. I've warned you that, Chief. Fucking stinks in there. Well, it is a good job I skipped breakfast. Come along. Love the way those little, like, shards jiggle around, and disappear, and move back into place on the people. It's really cool. I thought it was only one person was found dead. Yeah, this is the real one, I think. Where's the right angle? I can't. 
can't get four bars. Oh. I saw first. Hey, there. There. Identification unconfirmed. Oh, look at that. His entire face. There goes any dental match. Shot off his hands too. His fingerprints are a bust. Professional job. Shh, this many stiffs and no ID. You can link this to a hundred cases. So, uh, drug dealer is then. What do you reckon? Adam's family or one of my turners, Bob? Well, well, don't worry, decide later. Get the uniforms to bag it all. I'm getting a little cash. There's that new calf opened up next to the neck. You fancy it? Red, what is this? You are trying to process too much, Mr. Black. The Pandora cannot keep up. To concentrate only on the man you came here to find. There, yeah, Mr. Black, right there. Use your scanner. Identify and consolidate your memory. Who is that man? Pandora will do the rest. Identification confirmed. Jasper Prado. Status. Deceased. There's me thinking we could sort this out, my guys. <laughs> if you want to do it, then at least look me in the fucking eye! Sir, we have a name, then. Jasper Prado. Boy, here's the keys. You're driving. Oh, come on, shit. Why have I always got to drive? Rags. Ah, uh, rags. How do I know this? You don't. The Pandora is cross-referencing your memory with any police files in the database. This memory is breaking down. You must move on. No, thanks. I think I'd rather just read the uh, evidence. Blood test analysis came this morning. The victim's DNA matches the DNA we found on the blast site. Chadwick claims that same location was previously used by local junkies. So Prado, as a drug addict and a dealer, wasn't necessarily involved in the kidnapping. Hmm. Shooting victim identified. Shooting victim was found in the warehouse near Route 10 last week. The police found out who he was. Last week, we reported on the shocking discovery of a corpse in the abandoned warehouse near Route 10. The body of a 40-year-old man was found lying on the floor of the main hall in the warehouse, the victim having been ruthlessly shot from close range. According to a source, half of the victim's face had been shot off, making him unrecognizable. Police concluded that the victim's name was Jasper Prado, a known mercenary and ex-military man with no official place of residence. Police officers investigating Prado's case, Bart Fair and Hector Chadwick, Refuse to comment on the case. At this stage, it is still unknown if Prado was the only victim found on the scene. I mean, they weren't the only victim found on the scene, right? I mean, there are tons of dead people around here. Ballistic analysis conclusion. Examination of both crime scenes, the kidnapping and the Jasper Prado case, as well as collecting and analyzing the physical evidence related to weapons and ammunition during both criminal investigations leads to the conclusion that the shooters used weapons produced by ADS. was Prado and the woman, who I'm just going to call Grace because I've seen the name Grace pop up in the the subtitle sometimes. I'm just going to assume it's Grace unless proven otherwise. So Prado had Grace. Another one of those.
This place again? Yes. Your mind is definitely throwing up some kind of link between this Jasper Prado and the explosion. I'm surprised it's this pronounced, though. As if something is bothering you. Who is Jasper? Comes from a working class family. Father was a truck driver. Mother worked in a pub. Bright kid in school. The quickly lost all interest in education and started looking for fun elsewhere. Mostly partying in nightclubs and smoking pot with friends. Jasper's past and connections. He was in the army, then started work as a mercenary and drug dealer after being discharged. These days he makes most of his money dealing hash, pot, and ecstasy, but still keeps in touch with old friends. Black. You're dealing with raw theory. Pay attention to the facts only. You risk imminent corruption if you continue this course. Fuck you, Red. I know why I'm here. Police officer? A puppet? Incident report, Officer Bart Fair, on the 20th of June, 2015. Which is still the current date, right? Yep. Possible homicide in an abandoned warehouse. Oh, and then a little note from Bart Fair. Um, our informer, Jared Porter, claims that the weapons he was arrested with were produced by ADS and he obtained them with the help of an ADS employee called J. Jasper Prado? Question mark. Porter doesn't know this person's full name. Seems like Porter, a big name in the local arms trafficking business, worked in close cooperation with Big and esteemed arms contractor. So Jared Porter was an informer. I definitely heard gunshots. Well, I heard loud bangs. I guess they were gunshots, because the guy was shot, right? Anyway, I was out walking Cujo, my dog, at around 5 a.m. My wife's a heavy sleeper, and Cujo's always needing his shit in the morning, so, you know, sometimes I take him out for a walk. So, yeah, I, I was walking out Pump House Lane and into the fields when the shots were fired. Once again, police officer and a puppet. Case reopening application form. Time of incident, today, 20th of June. Uh, grounds for reopening due to new evidence linking Jasper Prado's death to the Bronze Grove kidnapping. Prado's DNA was found near the blast site. I hereby request reopening both cases since they appear to be linked. Decision dismissed. Edwin Hughes. J. 
Jasper Bredo. Uh, arrest record. Huh. 1995 to 1997. Sensitive information removed. So what, it's been sealed? That's the time they were in the military, right? And then speeding ticket. Forcible entry and detainer. So, uh, like breaking and entering, I guess. Classy drug possession. Classy drug possession. Speeding. Class B drug possession. Prado's car. Evidence in case number blah blah blah. So it looks like the license plate is UK3. I think that's an M? 3MO? UK 3MO? in this one? <laughs> Another copy of Sexy Girls and Guns magazine. Recall night. Oh, just a party. Patricia Bateman, am I a psychopath? What is that? Remember the first text message we got in the very beginning of the game in the hostage situation? It's like, stay away from the site. I feel like that was probably Prado talking to me. Because that sounds similar to what they were saying there. Just let this run its course. Police station. Detective Bart Fair missing. Hmm. 7th of August, 2015. So this is a little bit after the incident. It was the 20th of June. So it's been like a month and a half or so. Two months almost. 45-year-old Detective Bart Fair has been reported missing following a four-day period where he failed to report for work, and his wife, Jenny Fair, was unable to contact him. Chronicle was able to contact Fair's workmate, Hector Chadwick, who has taken unpaid leave in order to help find his friend. He's a great copper, Bart, but he's always got too far involved with his work. A man should never put his career first, especially when he has a family. I'll find him. He'll be fine. Detective Fair was recipient of the Severn Police Bravery Award in 2009 following his famous rugby tap tackle of a knife-wielding maniac at Birmingham, Moore Street Station. Homicide case file. Bart Fair, Hector Chadwick, opened June 20th, 2015. Case closed.
reviewing the data. Though you've been thorough in gathering evidence, your pursuit of supposition has sadly rendered this investigation useless. I'm pulling you out. No, Red, not yet. I'm so close. Like I said, you began making assumptions. The Pandora is neutral, Black, and so must you be. Maybe you really were there to save Jasper. But the moment you assume that to be true, you corrupt the simulation and cast doubt over the memory. If you continue to do so, we will not be able to proceed. Maybe I don't want to proceed. Oh, I think you do, Mr. Black. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want answers. <sighs> different approach this time, Black. Different how? I'd like to try starting... Before Prado was killed. You want me to try again? To save Jasper? I don't want you to try anything, Mr. Black. Everything is prepared for you. Just relax and explore. Yeah, sure. I wonder what would have happened if I shot that person. I didn't realize they were actually... gonna hit me. Would anything have happened differently? New memoir. The police hit a dead end, but I knew the victim, Jasper Prado. Murder in a rundown warehouse. Yep. Now, looks like an excellent time to see if we can go back there and try shooting that person. See how many more boards we've opened up. Excellent, Mr. Black. You're using all the tools I have provided. I appreciate the effort. I believe this investigation may be swift. I'm hoping this is pretty much entirely gonna be stuff we've already read. It most likely is. It all looks familiar, the pictures news articles uh, these are new these crime scene photos oh yeah there's definitely more than just that one person killed look at all those other mercenaries fingerprint identified police officers fair and Chadwick listen I think someone's been murdered here I've already heard that yeah 96% Nice, we got everything except one thing, apparently. Oh yeah, and how are we doing with the Asylum? Up to 84%. And I think the shiny stuff must be the new stuff? So yeah, we've gotten most of the stuff there. Cool. Also seen pretty much all of that, I think. Okay, so... Shall we try to go back here? Let's try it. Okay, took me a bit of time, but I managed to get back here. So, let's try to shoot them. Jesus. I'm pulling you out. Huh. Interesting. So indeed, it only seems to end when you die. I wonder if it just gets more and more intense, or if I actually like took better cover and stuff. Maybe I could have made it. Hmm. It's really annoying, though. It's... 
it's very time consuming to get back there. You have to go all the way through the whole warehouse investigation and everything. And it takes a good like five or six minutes just to get back there. I wish it was easier. These points where you might be able to do something different. It takes so long to get back there to try something different. That I, I want to, but I just feel like the game is punishing me for trying new stuff. Hmm. One more try. So it looked like the enemies were staying put. It didn't look like they had free movement. You kill one wave and then another wave pops up somewhere else. They can shoot you, but it didn't look like they can move. Uh, so I'm thinking... Assuming I can survive it, the best thing to do might be to, like, maybe run back here. I definitely need cover. So if I have time to, I think it'd be best to run behind cover and just kind of wait and then, you know, peek out to take a couple shots. Because I think it only ends if I die. So I don't think time is of the essence. I think I just need to avoid getting shot. Uh, I feel like they're probably going to pop up up there. I mean, they could even pop up up here. So I'm not sure the best place to take cover. Maybe I'll come back to right here and take cover. I don't think they can shoot my head here, right? Oh, they can move. Whoa. Enough. Enough of this nonsense. Shit. Did I get hit? Hmm. Hmm. Seems like you have like a second or two of bullet time when they first spawn in before they then go full on real time. And at that point you're at a severe disadvantage. I don't know if they were able to shoot me, shoot my head above that little barrier or not, but maybe you're supposed to shoot them really, really fast before the bullet time ends. That's like your grace period. I don't know. Or maybe you just are supposed to die there and there's no way around it. I think I'll just leave it at that. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to continue on, I think, through the asylum?